Welcome to Sergio's Structural Engineering channel. In today's video, we are going to develop uh, the pre-design for a roof steel truss. We are going to establish some similarities with a single supported beam and the pre-design for a steel truss. We concentrate our efforts in the, um, uh, to obtain the maximum stresses in the main uh, elements like a top and bottom cord and the last diagonal that is going to uh, bear or to resist the maximum shear of the structure. No time to lose, let's start with the video. As we discussed in the introduction of the, of the video, today we are going to develop the pre-design of a, uh, a steel roof uh, truss. Uh, the exercise that we are going to develop today, it is a pre-design for a truss of 30 meters of the span. Uh, the structure is going to be supported in uh, two HEB's uh, columns and the structure is going to be subjected to a uh, permanent load of 0.6 kilopascals and a life load uh, for maintenance of uh, 1.00 uh, kilopascals and the distance between the trusses is going to be defined by 6 meters. Uh, in the design of a steel structure, it's very typical to uh, put some joist uh, to take the load of the roof to over the steel structure. But for the exercise of today, that is just a pre-design of the steel structure, we are going to consider that that point of concentrated loads are uh, simulated like a uniform load, okay? And the value for that uniform load, the value that we are going to use in the, in the exercise for today, is just to use the values of a permanent load and live load and uh, multiply by the safety factor, okay, for dead loads, uh, 1.5 for the light loads, and just for the tributary width. So the uniform load that we are going to use in the exercise is 14 kilonewtons per mm -hmm. thing we have to do to make the pre-design of the structure is to perform the structural analysis. For that reason, we are going to assume that the truss behavior is an isolated beam, okay, that this is subjected to uniform load, we are going to reach uh, the around bending moment, okay, in which the maximum value follow the following equation, okay. So if we have uh, worked it out in the equation, we get the uniform load previously calculated, 14 kilonewton per meter and the span of the truss, 30 meters, uh, we achieve a value of 1,500 kilonewton meter as a maximum positive bending moment for the truss. After obtaining uh, the bending moment value for the mid uh, span, we have to reach the value for the shear force. And the value of the shear force is just the value of the reaction of the, uh, over the supports. Uh, that value is just to uh, multiply uh, the uniform load, 14, per the length of the beam, 13 meters, and divided by the two supports as a symmetrical condition. If we divide 14, divided by 2 is 7, multiply uh, uh, per 30, we get 210 kilonewton. After a structural analysis, uh, Let's study in detail uh, which are the forces acting or governing forces acting of the main elements of the truss. Let's start with a section, okay, at the middle of the span, where it is uh, supposed we got the maximum bending moments previously calculated. If we have this sketch that represents the section at the middle of the span, we are going to have at the top core a uh, compression forces that we call CED. And in the bottom, we are going to have an axial tension forces that is going to be TED. The distance between the two forces are also the distance between the axis of the, of the top core and the bottom core, we call it H. So, uh, the resistant bending moment provided by the two forces multiplied by the H must be greater than the design uh, bending moment, okay? Therefore, we can say that compression, actual forces compression in the top core and tension at the bottom 
4 shall be equal to the design maximum bending moment divided by the distance of the axis between the cores of the it is trivial or easy to determine which are the maximal axial forces in the top and the bottom cord of the truss. We just have to take the maximum bending moment at the mid span and divide it by the distance between the cores of the truss, that is 3 meters. So we get that the maximum axial force in the cores are 500 km. Then we have to uh, determine which are uh, the critical effort in the last diagonal of the truss, the one who is going to carry out uh, the maximum shear forces. For that reason, we are going to create a balance forces in this joint. Okay, so uh, this is the sketch of the joint, and then we are going to draw which are the actions acting against this portion of the structure. We get here the vertical reaction, which is, of course, the same value of the maximum shear forces, okay, that is 210 kilonewtons, and the aim of this balance is to get the value of the maximum tension forces in this uh, diagonal. So, for the uh, vertical forces balance, uh, the maximum tension forces is as easiest as to get the value of 210 kilonewtons kilonewton divided by cosine of 45 degrees. Once we have developed the balance forces for the joint, it is trivial to get the maximum uh, tension force for the string diagonal. The value is approximately 300. Once we get the critical values for the truss, uh, we, it is just pending uh, uh, to determine which are uh, the section of the shapes uh, that compose the, the truss. Let's start, for example, with the top cord, okay? With the top cord, we know that it's subjected to 500 kilonewtons, okay? This value shall be less than G, area of the shape, and FID, okay? Remember that this is the backing coefficient because the, the uh, element is stress under compression, and we just have to isolate the area, the value area, to get which is the shape uh, uh, to, uh, which comply with the conditions. Okay, in terms for the uh, uh, bottom, bottom cord, of course we have the same forces, okay? And then the capacity of the, sh of the shape, of the uh, square uh, hollow shape or the HB or whatever, should follow this equation, okay? So uh, the only thing we have to do is to isolate it, uh, uh, the area to create the value. In terms of the diagonal, uh, remember it is uh, uh, carry on the, the maximum shear. The value was uh, three kilonewton, and we have to follow the same expression. Okay, isolating the area, uh, isolating the area, we can uh, we can get uh, dividing the forces divided by the the design jail uh, steel rate we get the area and then we can check in the, uh, in the list of shapes to choose which is the uh, selected uh, profile to be. It has been uh, usual to compare our hand calculation results with the uh, output provided by any uh, uh, commercial structural software. In this season, we are, uh, we are familiar with the software called Static from the Kubus family. As you can see in the screen, uh, we have modeled the truss supported by uh, two HEB uh, columns. Uh, in accordance with the load distributions, okay, instead of going with a, a uniform load, we put a concentrated load over the joints of the top cord. Okay? Uh, that represents the load uh, carried out by the joist. As you can see in the strings, the value of the concentrated loads are the half or the rest of the, of the values since the tributary width is the half uh, of 1.5 meter instead of 3 meters. So now we are going to the output results and then we show the diagrams uh, for the axial forces. Then we can, we can verify that the axial uh, loads in the, in the bottom 
uh, core and the top core are pretty similar uh, 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 with uh, 500 that our cal hand calculation has been provided. And in terms of the shear, remember that the string diagonal is carried out uh, maximum shear forces, we get 264 kilonewtons, that is a value close to the 300 that was obtained by our pre-designed hand calculation.